my friends from under the trapdoor. Did they tell you in history class that the Egyptians mostly didn't drink water, only booze, because the water wasn't clean enough, and they had no way to purify it except by making alcohol? I never fully believed someone could survive solely on wine and beer until I saw it for myself. It was a cold, misty autumn day, just how I like it. I was coming home from work, totally minding my own business, when I met a good friend of mine from high school. Lizzie told me she was waiting for a guy, and I mistakenly assumed it was a date. But it was her drug dealer. After a few minutes of small talk, the guy showed up. They were horribly conspicuous and, before I could think of an excuse to get the fuck out of there, I noticed a few cops were staring at us. I ran on pure reflex, and I was right. Both Lizzie and the dealer were white, so sure, pursue the Hispanic girl, even though she's the only one here that doesn't look like Post Malone. I ended up in an alley, and I know it's stupid and cartoon-like, but my plan was to hide there. Unfortunately, I tripped in a few discarded cardboard boxes and fell on the floor behind a big dumpster. There was a small trap door in ground of the alley. It was weird, and I was totally okay with leaving it alone, but there was a rat approaching me, so I tried the handle, and it opened. As I entered there, I had the sensation to be falling forever, but in fast forward. It didn't hurt when I landed, and I was on my feet. I was in an alley just like before, but it was way dirtier and murkier, and I wasn't alone. There was a tall man with mohawk hair and a long beard. He wore a long black coat and combat boots, and binoculars were hanging from his huge pocket. He had a big haversack on his back and was holding something in both of his hands, but I couldn't see what. Under his slightly short trousers, I noticed one of his legs was mechanical. I didn't want to say anything, but he became aware of my presence just from the sound of my breathing. Maybe, just maybe, I was a little worked up. Who's there? His voice was thunderous. He turned in my direction and I finally saw what he was holding. I don't know the technical details, but I'm sure it was a high-precision rifle. He was some kind of sniper. Throwing my arms in the air, I said I'm sorry. Are you from the Lados? He growled. The man spoke English in an accent I didn't recognize. No, no, Isuea. I was just coming home from work. Police chased me. He carefully examined me. What's with those clothes? Who the hell are you? I am. Well, my name is Lupita. I study social work at the local university. He looked at me like I was insane. There's no university anymore. He barked those words and, before I could react to them, he kept questioning me. How the fuck did you show up in this alley? There's no way to come from the other way and I would have seen you. I? I know you won't believe me, but I fell from a trap door right here, behind you. He silently stared at me for a few moments, then shook his head like he said, well, whatever. You're gonna need some equipment if you're staying here, Lupita. I'm Alastrin. Follow me. I followed. We carefully sneaked through devastated streets, empty of people. The ruble piled up, and in mere few blocks I saw a lot of dead animals. Dozens of carcasses. I think I saw a human body too. The buildings were all shattered beyond repair, possibly unusable and inscribed in graffiti. There was no tree in sight and the pavement was all broken, like grenades were used there and nobody bothered to fix. It was a war zone. What is this place? I asked as quietly as I could. We call it the last city in the world, he replied, never looking at me, his smart eyes always scanning the road ahead. There's pretty much three kinds of people now. Latos, the controlling elite and their army, Budik, the slaves of the system, and us, the rebels. We call ourselves Motstand. It means resistance in an old language. I fell silent for a long moment to process this information. I was in a dystopia. The world was pretty much destroyed. Everything I knew was gone, and there was only survival and fear now. I know our world is pretty chaotic and often scary, but it's nothing like that. At least we have a sense of normalcy. Except if a tragedy happens, you will get home from work today. How would your life be if there was no work, no money, no breakfast, no family to welcome you home at the end of the day, no restaurants to pick up dinner, no permanent place to live? That's what living in the last city of the world is like. But it's also way more. Get down, Lupita. I jumped behind a pile of garbage as a deafening battle started. A lastern was fast like lightning. I couldn't see what was happening or how many men we were against. It was one of those moments that ends quickly, but at the same time they seem to last too much because you're ultra aware and your heart feels like it's pounding thousands of times per second. After it was over, we kept walking. There was a fresh corpse in the street, a man in military uniform whose left side of the body exploded in blood, bowels and gore. As we walked past him, was this deformed mass of a former human still at he? 
Alastrin murmured. I'm so sorry you had to end up like this, brother. After that, we arrived in the Mott Stand headquarters. It was nothing more than a hangar where around a dozen of people went to eat, sleep, and plan their next movements. Sometimes they found someone hurt, usually a slave, and brought them to get medical care. This was the entire last resistance against tyranny in the entire humanity. Conant, Alastrin's husband, was tending to someone's wounds when I first met him. The person was covered in blisters. I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. They had lost one arm, and only a raw lump descended from their right shoulder. This person probably won't make it, I thought. But at least they didn't agonize and die alone in the street. There was no water fit for drinking. I helped Conant put liquor and beer in his patients' mouths. Some were brand name drinks, but most were crafted by the resistance. You could tell Alastrin had a hardened heart, but Conant was still gentle. He was always eager to take care of people, even if it meant witnessing death and ugly sores. Conant welcomed me like a sister and helped me find the better fitting armor we could find in their spare box of equipment. They all wore some kind of protection under their clothes. Some had bulletproof vests, stolen from enemy soldiers, corpses or found after revolving huge piles of trash. A few of them had metallic vests and shoulder pads. I came to find out that a small woman named Yusul was able to manufacture them from remains of cars, buses, or any metallic piece that was big enough. Sometimes, they organized expeditions to places with interesting garbage, kind food, medicine, metal and weapons, mostly. I learned that, in their world, it was the year 2040 and civilization had fallen no more than three years earlier. Everyone I met had lost everyone else. They were mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, sisters and brothers to someone that has gone forever. I decided to stay and help for as long as I could, and Conant named me his assistant. I did my best to comfort the sick and the amputees, Nobody had hope of surviving for long. We just want to piss off Lados while we last, Conant said, as we worked together on bandaging an older man that lost one of his hands. We're dying soon, Lupita. We the rebels in this city used to be more than 300 people when civilization officially fell. Some surrendered, most died. The only slave that was ever able to escape and survive was Alastrin. That's why we call him that, it means protector of mankind. Things got better after he became our leader, but let's face it, Every day we are closer to being erased from the world. I just want to make sure I don't go down without a fight. I have so many memories from the last city in the world I could probably write a book. I kept coming back for months, and maybe you'll ask yourself why I didn't stay the whole time. As time passed by, I learned the three rules of the trap door to another reality. Rule number one, people from our world can only stay there for 24 hours before being pulled back and can't go again for the next 24 hours. So I simply vanished from there after spending an entire day. I was back in the original alley, in my original world, your world. Rule number two, nobody from the upside down city can go to our world. I tried so hard to hide my friends in our world, to bring the injured to our hospitals, but I can't. The trapdoor won't show up from the other side. I have to wait to be brought back after a whole day. I also can't bring anything alive even if I'm holding them in my arms. I would learn the third rule way later. It was the middle of winter. The cold is hard to handle in the last city in the world because there's no electricity anymore, at least, not for the rebels, and it's very difficult to find blankets that are good enough to use. I brought a few for my friends. I've been getting them basic supplies such as potable water, food and clothes, but I can only carry what's in my body and fits the trap door with me. So every time I cross the path between realities I bring only whatever fits a big backpack or a small suitcase. I'm not rich either, so I can't get them anything sophisticated. I obviously tried to bring phones, but all the signals were cut by Lados. We were in an operation to get firewood. It was almost impossible to keep warm without a bonfire that day, and I volunteered to go. We roamed around the whole devastated city, but couldn't find a single tree. Lados had made the slaves cut them all off and build rural fortresses for them, where all the remaining trees were. They literally expected the rebels to freeze to death. Not on my watch, I thought, as I climbed their tall walls. My plan was to enter their property and steal firewood from them. I don't know why I was so bold. I was never too athletic, but I'm small and light, and I'm the only person that's been properly eating in the group. It was only natural that I'd take the risk. I trust you, Lupita, were the last words I remember hearing from Conant. Alastrin looked at me like I was crazy, but we both knew he couldn't afford to complain about my boldness. I was shot in the moment I finished trespassing, and I remember dying. My blood was so warm, and the bullet holes hurt so much. But I immediately was back on the original alley, with my original clothes, and scathed. I was able to respawn. 
It made me wonder if that world was even real. Rule number three, nobody from our world can actually die there. So maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to take down Lados if I bring more people. But who do I know? Who do I trust enough? Who would think it's worth life through hell for me and my friends from under the trap door? I started to list everyone I know. My closest friend is my cousin Christina who lives in another country. I can't ask my co-workers or my pothead friend Lizzie. My parents are old and they would literally die if they knew the danger I was putting myself into. I was pretty much alone. The same way people from the last city in the world only had me, I only had them. I wish I could join them forever. I never felt such a strong sense of purpose in my life as I feel when I'm fighting their battles. When I went back next, everyone looked at me like they saw a phantom and a miracle. Alastrin hugged me for the first time. God, he was strong. I can't believe you're alive, you fucking weirdo. I saw you die. After explaining to them about the third rule, I volunteered to go to every dangerous mission from then on, so they wouldn't lose more people. We're losing Conant, Alastrin murmured, a single tear falling on his well-sculpted cheek. Conant was able to sneak in and get the firewood after the soldiers were distracted by me. They were intrigued about my body's disappearance and Conant had time to do what we went to do. But he was shot in the shoulder on the way back. As soon as I was brought back to the normal world, I was knocking on my neighbor's door. My neighbor was a surgeon's assistant, Dr. Lena Jenkins. I don't even know what I told her to make her come with me. I was crying and completely covered in snot. I think she took pity on me. I'm so glad she did. We were able to do so much more together. With Lena, I was able to provide way more supplies. She was tall and had strong arms that could carry three times more weight than I could. Lena seemed to be lonely and misfit in this world, just like myself, and she was used to seeing some bad stuff, so I guess I found the perfect person to go there. For a while, I felt happy and productive. Conant was able to survive, but he lost the movement of his left arm. Lena asked a lot about how the civilization fell. At first it didn't seem so bad, you know? Alastrin sighed. Dictatorships started everywhere, but we didn't think much of it. They were protecting us. We accepted they could take away some of our freedom for it. It was temporary, they said. We still could leave our houses, work, buy things. We just couldn't walk in groups and associate with individuals different from us. I didn't think it was too bad until gay and interracial marriage was banned. People like Lupita were sent back to their countries, they say. I don't believe that was the case now, but back then I, well, I had a boyfriend and I was more worried about myself. He wanted to escape, but I knew it was the same everywhere. I gave up on him and fake married my lesbian friend. Conant sounded utterly ashamed. After less than a year, the government announced there was a shortage of water and food in the whole world. That not everyone would be able to survive. So, at first, they fought wars to steal from the other countries. When there was a new shortage, they chose what they considered to be the most fitting humans, both physically and intellectually. It happened to be all white people, mostly without children. They wanted us to feel superior for surviving, Yusult added. I actually had a son, but he was sick and we didn't have medicine for that anymore. I used to be an engineer, and I guess I was a good one. I'm also very Germanic, probably the main reason why they let me lie. There were riots, of course, but they just made it easier to eliminate the unwanted citizens, Alastrin explained. We all escaped slavery in some different way. Yusult is short, but she killed five men in a high-speed truck and never made to the facility. Conant went up the grid and was never taken in the first place. I was a slave for a whole year before I was able to break free and kill everyone in my way. The prosthetic leg is from when the world was somewhat normal. After hearing about that, Lena changed. She became paranoid. She reported her apartment was invaded, but the police found no evidence to support her claim. She quickly moved to another place and left me a note, insisting we go to the last city in the world in alternate days, for safety, and that I don't contact her unless I absolutely have to. Lena thinks our world is not that far from that dystopia, but I disagree. I think humanity still sucks, but we have never been better. We've been fighting against discrimination and poverty. We condemn dictators. We won't let it come to this. I asked Conant, and Lena hasn't been showing up there lately. She doesn't answer the phone. I even asked for her at the hospital she works, against my better judgment, but they didn't want to give me information. The other day I met Lizzie's dealer. I asked him for a few guns. I'll be sneaking them to my friends as soon as I get them. I'm so nervous. Technically, this is the first time I'm doing something illegal. I even started to feel watched. But this is probably crazy, right? I'm so glad to finally get this all off my chest. Sorry if this is kind of rushed, but so much has happened. 
I promise that someday I'll tell you more details if you want. You don't have to believe me, but it would mean a lot if you did. Love, Lupita.